right, here we are in the Utah desert from an undisclosed location. I can't give away all of my camping secrets, but it's a good one. Uh, I am super pleased to be doing this video. Uh, finally got to do, uh, we've done a couple campouts with, with Dirty Paws, uh, but this is the big, kind of the big shakeout uh, that I'm doing. I'm doing this one solo. Uh, Sonia's away on a, on a, a work trip. So we're gonna do um, three videos. I think we'll do an exterior video, an interior video, and then later on this evening, once uh, once we have uh, some daylight go away, we'll do a, a lighting video. Enjoy. Exterior, let's get started. One quick note, let's talk about the truck for a minute. I purchased a 2007 Toyota Tacoma two years ago. It has been awesome. I, I really love it. I, I had an older Tacoma and wish I had never sold it, so I'm, I'm back at the Tacoma again. It does great in the snow. It does great in the mud. It does, does great off-road. It has plenty of storage for what we need. We're also planning a, a longer, longer range trip in the future. Uh, that'll be coming up uh, in the next year or two, and we think it's going to work really well for us. Okay, let's start from the front and work our way back. Uh, the base of the trailer is a Big Bubba's trailer. I ordered a kind of bare bones trailer, just the frame and the wheels. It's five by eight. Uh, it's really sturdy. I wanted to start with a really good foundation. I saw lots of plans with people designing their own trailers or Harbor Freight trailer, and that's just not what I wanted. I wanted something really stout, really sturdy, because of some of the terrain that we go through in Utah, some of the off-roading and some of the Forest Service trails and BLM trails, I wanted this thing to be tough. All right, right off the bat, you'll notice that I have a receiver end welded into the trailer. This enables me, if I have to leave the trailer, I can remove the hitch uh, and hopefully nobody steals it. It also enables me to install a different type of hitch if I need to in the future. The dolly in the front, uh, the wheel comes off as well as the uh, two stabilizer jacks in the rear. Those just go in the back of the truck when they're not in use and I like that better than the fold up kind because it gives me just a little bit more added ground clearance. And as you can see, uh, it just simply removes with this little pin. Moving on, this is a Harbor Freight tongue box. Uh, it houses, as you can see, the battery. Um, I'll zoom in in a second. You'll see the little fuse box um, that lives right there. Uh, some other odds and ends that I keep stored in there. This is a seven pin harness on my truck. And I'm also able to charge the battery as I'm driving. And that's what, what that little wire is for. All the wires go into the trailer. Um, I cut a hole in the back and there's a small section of radiator hose with a hose clamp and a barb fitting. And that goes right behind what you'll see later is a headboard and that hides all the wires. Something else on the side that won't show up in the, the lighting video. Um, I saw this little hack online. You can take your seven pin harness and I mounted a, a female end in the tongue box and then simply uh, jumped two of the, you know, the, the 12 volt from the battery to my running lights via a switch. And so when I get to camp, I unplug it, plug it into the box, and then that turns on all of my lights, which is kind of a neat feature. Moving on, the entire trailer is skinned in aluminum can't remember the thickness off the top of my head. Uh, you'll also see some various trim. All the trim, the windows, um, several other odds and ends I purchased from SoCal Trailers. Uh, shout out to them. They, they were really helpful. I spent a, a small fortune with them. SoCalTrailers.com um, That's where all the, the, all the trim that you see, the T-molding, every piece of trim uh, came from those guys. The windows slide open, which are nice. I'll show those more in the interior video. Um, 
what I'm gesturing at or pointing to, this is a roof rack that I designed just out of galvanized three quarter inch pipe. I kind of like the look of it. Um, it's just made out of some simple fittings. I'm also going to mount some taller pieces of pipe right there for an ARB awning uh, for shade, which will be really, really necessary. All the joints are epoxied in place uh, so it won't rattle loose. Uh, and then it's just bolted to the side, as you can see with those flanges. These hinges I found, they're, they're just black hinges. They kind of reminded me of the hinges that you would see on a Jeep. And these were originally intended for, I believe, a horse trailer. I, I found them online. I just, I like the way that they look. Um, that is a little gutter system when it rains that keeps the, the rain from coming into the top of the door, which is critical. Those T-handles are uh, keyed alike. Both the doors and the hatch all have the same key, uh, which is really helpful. T-molding uh, and some weather stripping, I'll show that in some more detail later in the interior video. Uh, the doors were a real challenge to weatherproof, but I, I finally got them figured out. On all the designs, I wanted the flat fenders. I think it's a really clever use of space. I always find myself uh, you know, resting something there like a map or a drink or my camera bag. Um, those are just stock utility trailers and I had to trim them down a little bit. In addition, there's a light um, directly above, a tiny little LED light that shines light right on to that area, which is really useful. There it is, which is really useful at night. Here are my um, stabilizer jacks, one on the left, one on the right. They have that same pin that you saw on the front. I also have a little tiny level, which uh, I can quickly tell um, how much I need to level the trailer. We often camp in some uneven areas. You can't really see in this. Oh, hey, Kelly. How you doing, Kelly? Good little camp dog. You can't quite see in um, this view, but the right wheel is almost all the way off the ground because of the, the uneven terrain. The hatch, uh, hatch was really tough to build, really tough. I have a simple light right there. Uh, that goes inside the trailer and then out to the front. I just used some spare plywood to get the layout, the, the, the arch for lack of a better word, the shape of the, of the hatch. And I just laid that on the side of the trailer, traced it out, and that's what became the, the beginnings of the hatch. It's framed with, um, with two by threes, and I should mention all the spars inside of the trailer, we'll see those later. Those are all two by threes as well. This view shows the sides really well. I special ordered four by 10 pieces of plywood for the sides. I didn't want to splice two pieces together. Those were special ordered from Wheelwright Lumber in Ogden. I mentioned the two by threes. Here's a sweep that goes across the back with some additional weather stripping, keeps everything fairly dust free, keeps it uh, watertight. Um, all that moon dust out in the desert is a little hard to keep out, but um, when in doubt, put more weather stripping on there, and, and it's done pretty well. Uh, the light rotates back and forth, uh, plenty of light um, to shine on while you're cooking. Fire extinguisher, that's really helpful, never know. Uh, I kept the galley really simple. Open shelving, some bins from Walmart, um, places to, you know, just kind of dump stuff. I didn't want doors, I didn't want drawers, I didn't want hinges and latches. Uh, these little bungee cords, believe it or not, they keep everything where it's supposed to be. I have plenty of room to cook and then plenty of room to prep over on the right. I saw a lot of really um, intricate designs, which are great, and at the end of the day, I wanted to get this thing done and I wanted to use it. Um, it I just didn't for my needs, I didn't want anything really complicated. I wanted, I wanted to keep it really simple. Uh, jug of water, that's also where I store dry food that tips up when I'm driving and there's a bungee cord that you can't quite see. Keeps that locked down. Um, I bought some nice cabinet uh, slides for the ice chest. Um, that's also bungeed in place when I'm, when I'm driving so it doesn't rattle around. There's a hole in the bottom. Uh, when I get to camp, I can tilt it up. Yep, there you go. Uh, I usually put the dog's water bowl underneath there and uh, drain off some of the ice. 
that tucks away really nice and neat when you're done with it and getting ready to go. The latch, it's a really simple kind of L bracket and then it slides into this groove. There it is, that just sits on the back of the T-handle. I ordered all those T-handles from eBay and with a little communication with them, I got them to key them all alike, which is, which is really helpful. Let's get into how I supported the hatch. There were a million different designs. Most of them included uh, gas shocks like you'd see on the back of a, a hatchback car or SUV. And then I stumbled across this. Um, so what you're looking at is electrical uh, conduit, uh, half inch I believe. And then I have two door stoppers on each side. One on the top and then one on the bottom that hinges. The, um, the pipe left and right when it's not in place and you simply take the door knob see right there uh, they kind of fall when they're not in place and you cut off the wide end of it um, a really clever idea really basic um, and then it just rests in place in addition I drilled a hole through the pipe and through the door stopper um, I got nervous about if there was some big gust of wind it could lift it up off of its uh, support so when I get to camp I put in these little clevis pins there's a close-up and that way they can't move so it's it's not the most glamorous thing in the world there's some pipe insulation that keeps it from rubbing on things there's the bottom support the bottom door stopper not the most glamorous thing but it works and it's it's simple and it, uh, it keeps the hood up out of the way. Uh, there you're, you see some uh, U-channel or C-channel with some more weather stripping. Um, again, lots of weather stripping to, to keep things sealed in, keep the dust out. There's my stabilizer jack on the right hand side, same as, as uh, the previous one that I showed you. There are my wheel chocks, you can see that yellow wheel chalk, you gotta have those when you're in camp, especially if you're removing the trailer from the truck. Um, some really simple mud flaps that I got from O'Reilly and cut them to size, bolted them in. The spare wheel, the spare tire, boy I really fought about this. I didn't have room underneath, I didn't want it in the truck, I wanted it elsewhere. Um, this enables me, to, it's kind of poised on the corner and then it's bolted in with these three long bolts that I'll show in a second and it still enables uh, use of that fender to place things like I talked about all earlier and yeah I even put another piece of plywood and these big grade 8 bolts with washers um, and it's it's not going anywhere it's it's really solid I saw a design that had like a strap around it and I think that's overkill and I, I've driven this thing several hundred miles and it, it doesn't move I check it all the time and, and it, it hasn't rattled loose I think that wraps up the uh, exterior. Let's get on to the interior. Let's talk some more details about the door. Window opens uh, from the inside, has a screen there, which is nice for some cross ventilation. There's some C channel and weather stripping that goes around the flat side of the door. So more weather stripping and the T-molding that's nailed in from the side using screw nails. The T-molding's nice, it's really malleable to make up any gaps or imperfections that you have either in your door or on the side of the trailer. The inside handle, again these T-handles were designed for like a utility shed application. And once I go inside you'll, you'll see how they latch. Again, everything about this trailer is supposed to be simple. So a little switch plate cover that latches up, um, gives it a place to slide, and then a, a simple scrap piece of um, electrical conduit that slides so it, it's, it locks from the inside. Something to keep in mind about that design, those little locking bars need to come out while traveling because they can wiggle their way um, into the locking position while you're driving. I had that happen once, luckily only on one door. So those need to come out while you're in transit. The window lets in plenty of natural light. One of the most common things I get asked is if it's big enough. 
Notice kind of the stair design on the inside, like you're looking at a set of stairs from behind. Uh, allows plenty of room for your feet. I'm six foot two, uh, and there's there's more than enough room for me to, to stretch out all the way. Looking towards the headboard, there's some hooks for headlamp, flashlight. This is a little faux headboard covered in vinyl. All the electrical is behind there, which is nice. I have some switches for those LED work lights. I'll talk about those more later. Some soon to be zombie lights, my um, voltage for my battery, some USB chargers and a cigarette lighter adapter. There's plenty of room to grow. Uh, again, it's it's uh, just some simple things for charging a device, charging an iPad, charging a phone at night. The entire interior of the trailer just has uh, three coats of spar varnish all across the walls and, um, and roof. There you can see the loom that runs electricity from the rear of the trailer to the front. Here's the um, fantastic fan, a three-speed fantastic fan. Um, it's also reversible. It moves a lot of air. It's probably wild overkill for that small of a space, but it's the smallest one I could find. I think in the summer it'll get a lot of use um, moving some air around to try and stay cool. All the electrical is run nice and neat in that black wire loom. Keeps everything up and out of the way. Another view of the the varnishing job, wear a respirator when you're doing that. Simple LED light on the inside, similar to the one in the galley. It rotates around, we'll show that in more detail in the lighting video. Shelving, just like in the galley, open shelving, just places to shove stuff. For the most part, with the little lip that I designed right there, um, unless you hit some really wild bumps things don't generally fall out and if they do fall out they just fall down onto the mattress below. Even with that minimal amount of storage it's been perfect for us you know we really don't need a lot of things when we're going camping. When I stretch out in the trailer you can see there we go plenty of room plenty of room for my feet uh, again I made that bulkhead there in the back uh, with with that in mind plenty of room to stretch out the opposite side of the trailer, nothing really different to show. Same thing on the other side. Door, the door latch, door lock, uh, all the, the same features on the, on the side that I just showed you. We chose to use a futon mattress, a queen size futon mattress. Uh, it's a four inch, we'll probably be upgrading to a, an eight inch or actually maybe just buying another four inch and putting it on top of it. I find that, that it's a little thin. That's also a, a double, double wide sleeping bag that's been really helpful and um, it's great for winter camping. All right, little peek underneath. There's my futon mattress I was talking about. Underneath, I painted the floor just with some um, oil-based exterior gray paint. There's an aluminum L-bracket uh, that I ran on both sides. It's screwed to the bottom and bolted with some um, counter bore holes on the side that you obviously can't see once the aluminum skin is on. That was probably overkill, but it, it made me feel better as far as bolting it uh, to the trailer. Okay, I think that's about all I can possibly think of to talk about on the inside. Let's, uh, let's move on and let's start talking about some lights. All right, let's talk lights. From this vantage point, you can see the little LED light on the side of the trailer. Its main purpose is to shine right there on the, the flat fenders. I leave these on all the time at, at night when we're, when we're cooking or just around camp. Um, it's nice to illuminate whatever you have placed on the, on the fender. Moving on to the trailer lights, I showed you in the earlier part of the video how I mounted um, a seven pin harness in the tongue box. When you turn that on, it turns on all of the trailer lights, the marker lights, the license plate light, the tail lights. 
These are also great if you have to get up in the middle of the night or when you're just working around the trailer when you're setting up so you're not bumping into things. That also kind of helps illuminate the ground, uh, illuminate things that you may have, may have left or, or dropped on the ground. The light in the galley is great. It is on a little swivel and you can swivel it um, from either its position right there on kind of the cooktop or up to the shelves. It works really well, plenty of light, uh, plenty bright enough to, to do what we need to do while we're working back there. Inside I actually have the exact same light. Oh, hey Kelly. The exact same light. Again, you can swivel it. It's almost too bright for inside. I mean, it's fine, uh, but it's, it's plenty, plenty bright enough and it works really well for inside. I think that wraps up for lights. I'm sure I'll have some more in the future, but that's about it.